Anyone who is not against us is for us. Sometimes in life, um, and especially in ministry, there can be probably, if I was to go around even around the church today, I'm sure there are many different opinions as to the way we should be running the parish or the way we should be doing ministry or the way we should be even living our, our own Christian lives. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're against each other. I think that it brings legitimate diversities. Um, but we should be supportive of each other in the way they live the Christian life. And there is this there is this challenge that the apostles are having to say, well, there are people who are casting out devils in your name, Jesus, but they're not walking with us. They're not with us, so what's going on? Should we stop them? They're using your name. They're bringing about good things, but they aren't walking with us. So what do we do with them? They wanted to get rid of them. They wanted to say, well, these people aren't with us. They aren't our friends. We don't even know who they are. But they're doing good things. And the challenge of the Christian is to be able to recognise, even if we don't know that good things are happening, or even if we don't necessarily think what they're doing is good, but if there are good fruits that are coming, we should be supportive of it. Because if they're not against us, if they're not doing the work of the devil, then they're probably doing the work of God. And we should be supporting them. It requires great diversity, but also perhaps a, um, an openness to see that God can work through each person, especially one who was, was very open to the work of God. And the way one person approaches a situation might be very different to the way the next person approaches a situation, and that's okay. If they're not doing the work against God, even if we don't know about it, even if we're, we're not... Um, aware of what they're doing, if they're doing it in the name of Christ, it's a good thing and we should be supportive of it. We're called to live today. Live for today is what this first reading is reminding us about. Don't necessarily plan to go away and do something for tomorrow, for the next year and so on. Be a saint today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Today we're called to be saints. Tomorrow we're called to be saints as well, but let's be saints today. Let's make a choice to be saints in what we do today. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Polycarp, who lived a very, um, he lived to the age, I think it was about 86, died about 155 AD, was martyred for the faith. He's one of the, the older people in the church's history to be martyred. And there was some of the historians write, well, why did it take so long for him to get martyred? Well, perhaps there were ups and downs in the Roman Empire at the time and persecutions didn't quite come the way of Polycarp. Polycarp, very late in his life, was asked by um, one of the, the Roman leaders to deny Jesus Christ. And he said, Jesus Christ has done me no harm all my life already. There's no reason for me to deny Jesus Christ as my king. They wanted him to deny Jesus as his king. He wouldn't do this. And so he was martyred very late in his life. He recognises Jesus as, as the king. He's one of the, um, the great inspirations for our celebration of Christ the King, which happens um, later in the year. Let us accept Jesus as our King, as the one who has sovereignty over us, the one who guides us in all that we do, the one who we listen to and seek inspiration for in what we do on a daily basis. Not just to do in the world, but to do to be saints in our community and to recognise that others around us might be saints as well. St. Polycarp, pray for us.